big in this this business. It sucks too. Man. Yeah, he's kind of low on his nut. Push it. Push it. Yeah. He should be able to push that mug over now. There we go. What's up guys? You want to meet your boy for life. I just wanted to say what's up. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, had a little accident, so I've been out of commission for a little bit. Um, then I've shot this video probably three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times trying to figure out, you know, what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it. But in short, got hurt. But at the same time, I had a guy to comment on my channel. And the comment was basically saying that one day I hope the tree slays you. And you, and, and, and I have more videos, but my video, um, that's what keeps giving me a problem. I, um, video editing software on my Apple has just been tripping so I'm trying to put those videos on and try to edit them up a little bit clean them up and then put them on so you might see on my channel where this guy makes this comment but basically I was trying to say in this in this with all this is that accidents in, in this business are prone to happen I mean I've cut myself in 2014 also um, now at this time I broke my knee and I had to get um, an emergency um, fasciotomy I think that's how you pronounce it surgery on my, my leg so I have two open incisions, and I don't want to gross you out with this video because in this video you're going to see those incisions. Um, they look pretty rough, but just a reminder of the seriousness of the job that we have. But I'm able to get out now. You'll see um, me and my knee. It's a little messed up. I mean, if you can see that. Um, I got the incisions, one on each side. But I'm able to, they want me to kind of bend it now. And it's been about, I guess, give or take about three to four weeks since everything's happened. So it's still pretty fr um, fresh. And then I also had a skin graft. I don't freak you out, but that thing looks pretty rough. But they had to use some skin off the leg. But I'm okay. Everything's good, you know. I don't need anything. Just keep watching my videos, support my channel. Hey, I appreciate that. But just for people like him who are some serious tree huggers, um, what I'm trying to get across is that we don't, as as tree climbers and as um, tree men especially those of us who handle removals um, the way I do and many others. I'm, I'm just, that's my passion, removals. That's my skill set. I mean, normally I'm called in when the tree's really bad over the house, over the fence. I don't deal as much around power lines as I used to because everybody's been getting electrocuted here lately. I really don't like being in a bucket truck, although it's really quick and really nice, but I prefer being in the tree um, and then rigging it down, being really precise and, and, you know, methodical with it, trying to get it down. Try to do it fast. Y'all see my video, the two rope antidote. I probably put four ropes up in the tree if I could, and I probably will eventually when I get some better. I like that DMI block that has the two um, holes in it. The one, that thing is a, that's a beast. But I'm gonna get me one of those one of these days. I just haven't broke down and bought it. But also, I like that new Arc 3 device. That thing's amazing. I got it. I normally don't like mechanical ascenders and descenders, but that thing is bad. Check it out. I think it's still on on back order, but check it out. And um. But, you know, overall this time it's been really um, it's been really nice, you know, even though, you know, something good came out of a bad situation, it's definitely a learning experience. Basically, I was cutting a limb and didn't notch it, whereas I should have notched it, but since I didn't notch it, it, um, it split on me. And this was primarily because of the rain. I didn't factor in. I had to cut every limb like this, and it was on a big oak tree, and everything worked out up into this limb. And I say this limb, it was like a small tree. It's probably about give or take two and a half to three foot around at least um, and it split probably about four or five foot back toward the tree because I like to be a back probably about four or five foot off of my cut where I put my lanyard around the limb that I'm that I'm cutting just in case if it rips to give me a little bit of room but this one in particular I was actually wrapped around the bigger limb that this limb came off of so that's why this one kind of got to me but but going back what the whole point of this is the response to this comment being us tree guys you know, we like removals, we like doing what we do. People like him don't appreciate us because, you know, we don't we don't just do removals and we don't do these things for the sake of, of trying to just destroy and slay trees and 
even though we make it look all fun and we make it look really good, our whole purpose is to remove the threat away from the house. Um, and I'm sorry about that. I, I decided to sit in a position where I'm right in the sun, and I apologize. I, I got this little tractor here. Just got this, too. Um, I'll probably end up selling it, but shout out to Tim. If you're watching, I know you subscribe to my channel, but good guy I met off Craigslist. Um, we traded up for this really nice um, tractor. And um, trying to express to people like him that, you know, we're not in this um, – for the thrill of, of taking things down. Granted, it's fun sometimes, and you can make it look really fun on these videos, but for the most part, we primarily do this to provide for our families and to take care of business. And not only that, you know, you can make a customer so happy. I mean, when they look at that tree and it's over their house and you get it done, and they're like, wow, I thought nobody could do it, especially when you climb. Now, a lot of you guys got businesses with, y'all got buckets and cranes, y'all do it, do it fast and make it look so easy, but it's a whole nother ball game when you climb it. I'm pretty sure y'all know. Most of y'all had to climb before you could could um, ascend, so to speak, in that bucket. Before you could hang down from that cable on that crane. You know you know, you had to put your work in to understand the, the fundamentals of climbing a tree. So this is just in response to him and just trying to help him, this guy, just appreciate that, you know, we appreciate our jobs and we love what we do, but it's not for fun. Every day our life's on the line. Um, there's certain things that happen to us, so we have to constantly contemplate that as we continue to take these trees down and do what we do. So this is just a kind of prelude to this video, and, and then in this video, I'm just trying to just break down what happens to a person when they have to go through an incident or accident such as I've been in. This one, this time, because again, I thought this was something simple. Here it is. I was still out there working the whole rest of the day. I didn't go to the hospital until like, it happened about 2 or 3 o'clock. I didn't go to the hospital probably to about like 7 or 8 that night at least maybe even nine, but they told me it was pretty bad. It was uh, um, not only the knee, and I think that's what I was only focusing on. I, I thought I just kind of banged my knee up when the limb kind of pinned me up in the tree, but what it was, it wasn't just the, the knee. I had um, compartment syndrome, which forced them to do the um, fasciotomy or fasciotomy. I can't remember how to pronounce that thing, but it's pretty ugly. You'll see in the, in the video, and I have another video out from a, a, um, a health standpoint or from a, a – um, I guess a, a, a slow progress of how these things heal because it looks really, 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 really freaky. I'm telling you, you're going to be like, whoa, I'm glad you're okay because it looks really crazy. Especially some of you guys might have had this happen to you already, so y'all done dealt with it. Some guys have yet to deal with it. Sometimes they think they're just going to go through all their experience and all their life and tree work and never have any accidents, never really see no accidents. And for some, that hey, it happens like that, but not everybody. Sometimes you get hurt, even though you think you're doing everything right. And I even imagine I was doing, I mean, everything had worked out all up until that point. Uh, and I, now I realize the things I could have did different, but what I was doing the whole time was working the whole time. So I said, why change? And boom, still a freak accident. That limb, it had, you know, that again, we see many accidents, but the, really the most dangerous thing is being inside that tree. That's the most dangerous thing, whether it's dead or alive. I didn't factor in again, the fact that it had been raining. So and we was working in the rain, so there was a number of things that, you know, I could have probably did different. But, and that's, again, you know, I, I man up and I take responsibility for that. I should have been more um, observant um, of that, but I'm okay. But just check this video out. And, um, again, it's just for me, really but for newcomers, you know, you're getting into this, this trade and you want to, um, you know, you really have to consider your safety of you and your guys and consider the safety of, 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 of the property and many other things, the liability of it all. And it's real serious because, I mean, I, if this, if the limb actually, the way it landed, and I was only about 20, 25 foot up, I think, the limb hit the ground because it was so long. It's about 25, 30 foot long limb, small tree, basically, um, went down like this. But the force of it, if it would have went down the rest of the way and broke off, I mean, I'm telling you, it probably could have, it probably possibly could have killed me or broke my back or did something pretty serious, almost to the equivalent of being snatched, like almost like the, the force when the chipper um, rope is called the chipper it just whoop, happened so fast I'm telling you it happened so fast and I was like before I knew it I'm having I'm laying I'm like I'm down and I'm trying to figure out what to do what to do okay I'm scrambling and I tried to grab my saw couldn't grab it off this side because I had two saws I was using my big saw um, and so that was dangling down but I had my little saw still connected to me um, in this particular instance because I was cutting like I said some pretty big limbs a big oak tree and um, so I couldn't grab that. So that's when I had to grab that trusty hand saw. And it was hard getting it out because, like I said, I, I went from 
bend in the tree at an angle like this to flipped up almost upside down like this because the limb when it went down I went down with it so I'm like upside down too so um, I grabbed that hand saw off and cut that lanyard that I'm telling you and I sprung back and that's when I cut myself with the spike I spiked my, spiked my leg so you know it's just one of them deals you know but I don't want to talk you half to death I know I can go on and on and on but but check this video out um, thanks for watching my channel and like I say everything's okay and I appreciate you as always for watching just something to show you guys okay I guess I get tired of the tree huggers out there y'all know who they are um, <laughs> whatever reason they feel like when you see a guy or a gal any channel on YouTube that's having to take down a really old tree they always say you could have saved the tree you could have saved the tree but these trees be dead people they are dead it's only a matter of time before they take somebody out. And one guy, he had the nerve to say, okay, uh, oops, give me. He says, I hope the next tree slays you. Well, I mean, they do in some senses. I busted my knee up on this tree. I mean, hey, look, gotta drain all this out, the pressure in the compartments, you know? Hey, I got cut there before. I get cut all over my hands. <laughs> you know, we get slayed every day. Some people don't make it home with their lives, but the whole purpose is not to, the thrill of killing trees or slaying trees. The whole purpose is to cut down and remove a dead, you can, a threat, something that could be potentially life-threatening. And to say that somebody else needs to be slayed or somebody else needs to be killed or whatever or destroyed like that tree was because they feel like you did that, that's insane and ludicrous because the idea is that we're trying to remove a threat that again could be possible threat to their danger their house their property and most importantly to them or their family and so we put our lives on the line and when we get hurt nobody else has to you know pay our bills and stuff like that this is our problem when we, get we have to heal we have to cooperate or cooperate cooperate whatever you want to say it i mean it's just it's sick um to think the process that we have to go through when the tree slays us, as they say, <laughs> let the tree kill you, which is so silly. But I just wanted to go on a little rant because this is just ridiculous. These people are crazy. Um, the time and the amount of time that we spend on our, with our life on the line, and granted, we get away with it a lot of times, but sometimes in this situation, I got hit, I got hurt. Hey, I'm still alive, I'm still kicking. It hurts like crazy, but. I got hurt there. It's just one of them things. It's an occupational hazard. I mean, and you try your best to do everything according to, you know, you wear all your safety things and you do everything, but sometimes just freak accidents happen. So that's the problem. And then they want you to come there and do the tree for $50. Oh, yeah, you can do this tree for $50. Well, I'm in the hospital for six days. Can you imagine how much that's going to cost $50 compared to a six day hospital stay? Come on now. That's at least. So. There you have it, people. But I ain't going to rave too long. I just want to show you guys. Um, just uh, these tree huggers killing me. Because, I mean, there are some situations where they have to got a lot of good, healthy trees. But sometimes if a person doesn't want it, what can you say? They, they don't get Either you can do it or somebody else is going to do it to remove the unwanted tree. So, But most of the time, and I find this true in my, in my case, but other people's case, when you, we take a large dead tree, the tree is dead or it's dying. Something's about to happen to that tree, whether it happens today or tomorrow or next year, but we're just removing the threat. So, got this hose. Ah. Ah, it actually felt really good, that pot. But it's sucking out all the, the blood and stuff. You can kind of see it. Look at that. And my leg it just goes into that little pouch down there. You can almost hear it if you listen. a little vacuum I might have made it loose all it's moving I'm doing I don't know you know you can't keep a tree ninja down but I'll cover this back up oh okay it's always something <laughs> yeah I just wanted to shoot this in response to that again this is um, but here's what dear Don had to say I hope the next tree slay you okay and then you got guys like Colin S great job thanks for taking the time 
I got um, Purcell. He drops lines for me. A lot of guys, a lot of positive stuff, you know. I ain't going to get into everybody's comment, but, you know, what Tom said. Love the channel, you know, different things. I mean, you know, everybody, you know, we all have, you know, our different opinions, even though we all tree workers and different things like that. But we all run into guys like Dear Don. Let's first, let's see who he is. Okay. Which, like most of these guys there, normally, nobody's. And so that's all he has, playlists on things that he likes, which I care, can care less to look up right now. But um, just with respect to his comment, um, and I'll blow it up. Okay, let me see if it will. Some, oh, there we go. Sometime, there we go. I hope the next tree slay you. And so, Red, I mean, he didn't know this at the time he wrote this. I was already in the hospital because I had jammed my knee up in a tree. I had the limb come back and kick back and hit me. So, I mean, you kind of seen that in other little video, but I'm just going to explain something to you guys. Um, I just want to kind of explain, like, for people like him, okay, if we were doing this again because we wanted to just take down healthy trees, okay, we're not clearing down plots, we're not out, you know, just destroying the forest or the, or the rain, the Amazon, or nowhere like that. We're not doing anything. But we're residential, removing trees, large trees at that, not little trees. These are large trees, large, dangerous trees. These trees are very dangerous in that they're, they're dying. They have decay in them. They're rotten. They have disease. And most people, they see the tree come down. They see all the glory with that, but they don't realize the story. So for people like him who don't necessarily understand that, I know all you guys won't feel that way, but when a person puts his life on the line to make sure somebody else is okay, you don't look at that person as a as a tree killer. I mean, even the most unreasonable tree hugger would understand that, but some of these guys are pretty unreasonable. They don't see the logic in trying to, um, they, they just think you automatically supposed to keep trying to save a tree, trying to save it. It's just like a tooth. Sometimes a dentist will try to save a tooth and he'll save a tooth, but the problem is with the abscess, if that poison seeps to your brain, you can die. So sometimes it's best to take it out. Likewise with your dead trees, if it's close to your home, if it's close to your um your bedroom, and most cases with me being a climber, it's right there over somebody's house or whatever the situation. So it's one of them deals you can't just always just expect to go in there and just be saying, okay, this is a perfectly healthy tree and I'm going to cut it down and I'm going to have the most exciting time doing it. You know, it's not one of those situations. Again, it's one of those situations where it's a, most time it's out of necessity and then it's out of the fear of the homeowner being scared again for their property or, or for their life. So that's why we do what we do. Now, I'm not trying to do this to incur any kind of sympathy or anything because, you know, things happen. This ain't the first time I've been hurt. You get hurt in this line of business. It's just one of them things you get hurt. But the thing about it is, like, when you have people like him who will make comments like that, uninformed comments like that, you really can't um, always express to them and just take them to the side and say, hey, this or that or this or whatever, you know. But I just want to shoot this video out there for everybody who um, who maybe was has been in my shoes before or who's in my shoes right now who will be one day. Because, I mean, you can cut a tree right a thousand times, and it's just that thousand and one time. It's just something might happen. And fortunate enough, most of the time we walk away with our life. It's just something we can live and learn from, but it's just mistakes happen. I mean, some guys, granted, they can go forever. It seems like nothing ever happens to them. But that's just them. You know, you can't always expect that to be you. But, again, that's not complaining or anything, but it's just it's saying it comes with the territory. Some people are a lot more fortunate than other people as well. So it just boils down to that, too. But the thing about it is that, here it is, you got people like him. Okay, I'll turn back over. Okay, what I thought was basically this situation, I still worked a little bit, I climbed a little bit, and I still stayed on the job site all day. And I figured I'd just sprain my knee real bad, but I get here and I realize that it's gonna take almost six days in the hospital. You know, I'm not I'm not complaining about that to the homeowner and saying, okay, you're gonna take care of that bill or, or to the guy I'm contracting for. That's my problem, you know? So... Here it is. We don't slay trees. We don't cut trees down. We don't. Um, we don't do all these things to trees that these tree huggers imagine that we're doing, for the malice purposes that they might imagine in their mind. Because most of the time they're imagined. They're not real. Most of the time, again, we are taking stuff out of the way that's possibly a hazard to the homeowner 
or to the property. So, and most times these trees are de dead and decaying. So this tree was dead oak. And what ended up happening was, I, of course, sorry about that guys, but basically like I was saying, um, our life is on the line every time that we go out here in these trees. I mean, you gotta think about it. You always got your, your ground guys you're trying to worry about if you're a business owner. Make sure they don't die cutting themselves with a chainsaw. You make sure the homeowners know where to be found. Their dogs, their children, their cars, their their property, anything. You, I mean, so much liability with this work. Um, and that's not to say we shouldn't do it, but it's just the idea with it. You know, it's just like, again, for people like him, they just, it's one thing for him to say that. But like I was saying, we get slayed every day. I mean, just those thoughts alone and just having to deal with all that caseload and that workload. Is enough to where a lot of people can't measure up to this job. That's why a lot of people don't last in tree work. A lot of guys, they just don't, they never can just, they never can stay. And so um, just, again, encourage all my guys who are out there who, who hit the beat every day, who do it hard, you know, hey, more power to you. I'm right here supporting you, and I appreciate the support. You've always supported me, especially with my channel. You guys watch my channel, get a lot of support from you guys, and um like again, I don't want no sympathy or anything. It ain't. This was never the intent. This video is just to cast light again on on the type of um people that you come in contact with, and that you don't always see those comments. Sometimes they they will probably message me comments like that. Uh, there's even more stuff I could show you, but I'm just not gonna get into all that. But it's just the idea, you know. Hey, you know we have to. This is what happens to us sometimes when we're trying to take care of other people, and when we put our life on the line. Um, again, not for the purpose of doing something, even though we make it look fun and we might add some captions and things like that, make it look like we just had the best time in the world, but it's not as always easy as it seems, you know, to take a, a tree down and cut it. Ask anybody who started, it was easy. The first time they put on some spikes or the first time they had to use a rope, not even use no spikes, you know, so let them explain the situation to you. Them type people understand. But at any rate, or at any rate, Thanks for watching and um, thanks for your continued support. I appreciate you as always, but I'm good here. I'm going to be checking out of here soon. Just the healing process now. I'll be coming back before you know it. Um, shoot more videos as always. You know, can't keep a tree ninja down. Tree boy for life. Peace out.